Good. Thank you so much for coming tonight. I, I mean, to take time out of your day to, to actually want to learn stuff, because honestly, you pretty much learn everything you need to know from TV. <laughs> Okay, granted. Okay, 46% of the commercials on TV are for drug advertisements. And, um, you know, we can actually get more chairs in the back if we can set them up. The, today we're going to talk about arthritis reversal. Now, the tough part with this is if you are getting your information from the television, it's wrong. If you're getting your information from uh, the standard medical doctor, it's going to be wrong information. It, it, and, and the frustrating part is see this group of people here? Now those are bodybuilders. When I'm doing research on arthritis, I'm looking at bodybuilders because I mean they're putting their joints under strain. And now how about old bodybuilders? Okay, old joints straining. Do joints age though? I mean in order to join this group, you gotta be 75 years old. So I still got like 23 years before I can join them. You know, so, so it is possible. Now, now here, let's change this. Let's look at, at how joints are though. When you understand what a joint is, you're gonna understand that certain therapies you've been recommended are inconsistent with health. It just doesn't work that way. I mean, if you look at this design, you've got bones, particularly the spinal column, which is brilliant. It's strong, but it's flexible. Now, since the nervous system controls absolutely every function in the body, if this, you gotta, you gotta trade, trade off stiffness for flexibility and protection. Now, if any of these bones get knocked out of place, or if the disc starts to get compressed, you start to get nerve problems. Now, this, should be working. Let me see if that works better. Every joint in your body is pretty similar to this. It's two bones coming together surrounded by a joint capsule. On the edges of the bones is cartilage. Now, I've had so many patients, I'd say about 90% of my patients are lied to. They'll come in and they'll say, yeah, doc, my knee or my elbow or my this or whatever, it's bone on bone. And they'll say, it's bone on bone. If bone on bone occurs, it doesn't move. This is a leg that's bone on bone. Okay, it doesn't bend. If, the, if it bends, there's movement, there's cartilage, there's fluid. Okay, does, does that make sense? Okay, so if you've been told it's bone on bone, but the thing still bends, it's not. Now, how joints are, you've got two bones coming together surrounded by a joint capsule. Now, this joint capsule has a nutrient inside. It's called synovial fluid. And this fluid is a super filtrate of blood. So if you have healthy blood, you're going to have healthy synovial fluid production. If you have sick blood, thick blood, poisonous blood, you're going to have an abnormal flow. Okay, so the joint's going to dry out and then the joint's going to hurt and desiccate. Does, does that make sense? Now, how many people in here have joint problems? Can you tell me when it's going to rain? No, but do you want to know why? Okay, because if you know why, it's going to make sense. See, when, 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 the, when the weatherman says there's a low pressure system moving in, he actually means that the pressure around you is less. Like right now, we're pretty close to sea level, okay, and there's about 65 pounds per pressure per square inch on my body. This means every square inch has 65 pounds. You don't feel it because we're under an ocean of air because it's equal. Now, that also means that if you have equal pressure going in on that joint, there's 60 pounds, of, five pounds of pressure on that joint. So if there's a low pressure system, like the barometer falls, or there's a weather system moving in, those joints, if they don't have a good fluid transfer, they want to almost explode out. So let's say there's like 50 or 60 pounds of pressure outside. Those joints want to explode out, so then you notice pain. Yes, it's going to rain, or yes, the weather's changing. So the health of the joints has to do with two things, movement and healthy blood. Does, does that make sense? Okay, good. Now here, God, I really would like this thing to work. <laughs> now, we're gonna look at discs. Now, this is the most frustrating thing. Are discs alive or dead? Are discs alive or dead? Now think of this, because if you're going to answer alive, and I'm in, I'm in agreement, I think they are alive, but that means that they have cells that take in nutrients, produce proteins, and eliminate waste products. So does that mean a disc can grow yes. and shrink? Yeah. 
Wow, think of this. Now this is something surgeons don't even think about because they don't know. I mean, they might have learned it in school, but they, if, they, if they say, look, a disc is a disc, it's gonna get degenerated but it can't regrow, that's foolish. It's absolutely foolish. A disc is alive. If it's alive, it has to take in nutrients, produce proteins, and eliminate waste products. The tough part with a disc is the force loading on it. I mean, if you take an average, say, 200 pound guy, that disc in my low back is about the size of a 50 cent piece. So now if I was to carry, say, a bag of groceries and step off a curb, the pressure on that disc would increase exponentially. We're talking two, three, or even 400 pounds of pressure on that disc. So that means blood vessels would be crushed. So now a disc to be alive, it has a really unique blood supply. It has a thing called, it gets its nutrients through imbibition. That means movement. That means if it has correct movement, it gets correct nutrients. And correct nutrients means it can do what its cells do grow, shrink, adapt. Does, does, that, does that make sense? Oh man. Okay. Well, this is going to go a little, a little different. I, I love my new toy that I can just press and it work, but it doesn't do it today. Okay. Now you might've heard of neuropathy. All this is, is Latin for nerve problem. Okay. Except it doesn't make doctors sound too smart. If you pinch a nerve in the middle, you don't feel it where it is in the middle, where the spine is, you feel it where, where it supplies. So typically people are going to have leg pain. Like have you heard of sciatic nerve? Yeah. Okay. That has nothing to do with the leg. It has everything to do with the back because the sciatic nerve comes out of the back and it, and you feel it in the leg. So if those discs in the back are compressed and why do it, does a disc get compressed? Because either improper motion or improper blood. Okay, does that make sense? Those two things, those are the only two things that are gonna cause disc degeneration. But you feel it not at the spine, you feel it away. Now slip disc, herniated disc, bulging disc, all of those are the same thing. All it is. Now a disc is phenomenally tough, phenomenally tough. Now I taught human dissection for eight years. <coughs> And you could take a probe, which kind of looks like a pen, on a cadaver, and you could pass it in bone really easy. Bone's really porous. But you can't beat it in a disc with a hammer. Mm -hmm. A disc is 80 interconnecting rings of ligaments surrounding a, a like gelatin-like center. So in order to have a disc bulge, dip, slip, disc injury, takes decades. Okay, it takes years to have that kind of problem. That means for years that problem has to be apparent and then it slowly wears out and the body lays down extra bone to protect it. So degeneration, isn't it? So slip disc, bulging disc, herniated disc takes a long time to form or to happen. And what that does is if it doesn't get its nutrients, so you got a bone here, a bone here. If that disc doesn't get its nutrients and it starts to um, not be healthy, do you think it gets thicker or smaller? smaller? Smaller, exactly. So that bone comes down, so you start to notice stiffness and tightness. Now the biggest thing with that, when you start looking at this, oh, this is a bummer. This is a side view of a low back. Now I'm gonna show you, this is a normal bone, that's a normal disc. Can you even see the disc at these two levels? No, no. Now, in order for a disc to get that compressed, it takes about 10 years. Now, not 10 years of symptoms, but at least a problem that's been there for 10 years. So that means 10 years that thing hasn't moved. And remember, a disc gets its nutrients through imbibition, which is movement. So that person had a disc problem for 10 years. Now, What's, what's tough is the discs in this, and this is the very, very low back, they supply the prostate, they supply the bowel, the bladder. So his symptoms would have been low energy because he couldn't absorb B12. It could have been prostate or bowel pro problems. It could have been bladder insufficiency. It could have been, I mean, the, the host of different conditions because all those nerves that supply the function of the body come out of the base there. Now, he actually only noticed it. He went camp and he picked up an ice chest. His legs went numb. Do you think it was a leg problem? No. No, of course not. So they did the MRIs, they, you know, they said you've got two bulging discs and you know, every other horrible thing they could tell them. Now, back surgery is kind of tough. There's an 85% failure rate with back surgery. I'm sorry, 85% failure rate with back surgery. That means you go in there, you cut out some of the bone, you remove some of the disc, you put a steel plate on it, and the person doesn't really make out well. 85% of the time. And it's so common that then in insurance billing codes,
there's actually a failed back surgery syndrome billing code. Failed back surgery syndrome, it's no syndrome, you can't cut on someone. Now what, what, what he did, he chose to, to come into care and you can see within a year the disc is regenerating. Within two years it's fully regenerated. No, 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 say it with me. Wow! Okay, so we got surgery on one side. Okay, that has an 85% failure rate, or we trust that the power that made the body heals the body. We restore normal motion to it, and the tissue regenerates. Does that make sense? It does to me, too. But what, what, what's tough is we got to look at this from a little bit different perspective. Now, now, arthritis, there's a number of different ways you can categorize it, okay? I mean, there's gouty arthritis, there's rheumatic diseases, there's osteoarthritis. Over 90% is osteoarthritis, and this is, it's got a bunch of names. It's called degenerative disc disease, degenerative joint disease, um, osteoarthritis, and that's the one we're mainly going to focus on because the other ones, and, and this includes rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, they're all autoimmune disorders. Now, autoimmune disorders in our environment are epidemic. Okay, they're, they're a massive rise. And this is where the body is literally attacking itself. And this has to do with current medical care. I mean, if you start thinking, has the planet ever been exposed to flu shots from six months on your entire life? So if you're 80 years old, you've had about 80 flu shots. Does, has the population ever had that experiment done before? No, we do now. Okay, has kids ever had 74 vaccines before? No, brand new. We've never done that before. When I was a kid, we had about four or five, and they waited till five years old. I know I'm extremely old, but you know, I mean, I mean, when, when you look at it, when you're injecting foreign viral proteins into the body, it starts to attack itself. When you start taking processed food, it starts to attack itself. If you've ever eaten corn chips at a restaurant, Today, in this, this environment, they're genetically modified. So you're taking foreign proteins in your system that's causing an autoimmune response. So the autoimmune response is responsible for the rheumatic diseases. Now, now we actually have several patients that come in. Now, now this, multiple sclerosis, this is not arthritis, but it's the nervous system starting to break down. Okay, and this is everything. Since the nervous system controls and coordinates every function of the body, and the body in multiple sclerosis patients, it's literally attacking itself. It's attacking the nerves. So how we approach this is we approach it like a nervous system or an immune system problem. And typically you restore the nervous system, restore the immune system, and patients recover. This gal here, and the way that you can diagnose multiple sclerosis is through a brain scan. They actually have brain lesions. And what's fun is after a few months, now this gal here, Becky, after um, she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis for like five years. And which, which is tough, because if you're a single mom with two kids and they tell you, look, you're going to be in a wheelchair in 20 years, would that be fun or kind of scary? Scary. scary and frustrating yeah and so then they go in there they give her a, a brain scan and they say well you know it's definitive you now have it. Um, it and here take these immune system suppressant drugs that are gonna make you really bad well she she tends to think that the body's intelligent it's an intelligent design it's self-healing and self-regulating wait that sounds pretty good the body is self-healing and self-regulating. If that's true, maybe multiple sclerosis can be reversed. Maybe diseases can be reversed. Do doesn't that give you goosebumps? Yeah. Because that's what happened. She comes in, nine months later, gets a post-scan, there's no more brain lesions. That was kind of cool. I know, and that's 100% that's of the time. Now, now this, um, a few years ago, this gal came in and, and mom was kind of panicked, 12-year-old girl, she was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disorder. And more and more kids are getting this, you know, because of our medical procedures. But what was frustrating is she also had fibromyalgia. So now she had two incurable diseases. The mom wanted me to put her on disability. 12 year old on disability. Why? Because she'd be more available for state funds. Again, this is, this is the state of our medical world. So I said, well, let me check her out. Um, and you know, obviously, if this is a normal neck, her neck is not normal. That means her nervous system's under tremendous pressure. 
So let's get her blood clear, because what happens to joints if you have clean blood? They work better. Okay, we get her off of toxins and poisons. When you figure most packaged foods have MSG, which is neurotoxin, virtually every fast food has neurotoxins. And guess what her diet was mainly composed of? Neurotoxins. neurotoxins. Yeah, fast food. I mean, it, it's, it's like, gosh, you know, we got a kid with a nervous system problem when we're giving them neurotoxins. That makes sense. So we go in there x-ray or adjuster, she starts to notice a difference. Within 30 days, her symptoms start to go away. Within 90 days, she goes back to the rheumatologist and gets a blood test. And the only way to diagnose rheumatoid arthritis is a positive RA factor on a blood test. It's just a little tiny, you know, reading on a machine. And the doctor goes in and says, her rheumatoid arthritis is in remission. Now, now this woman, she, she didn't have a great education and, or vocabulary in English. She didn't know what remission meant. She didn't want to go up to that scary guy in a white jacket and say, well, what does that mean? And I said, well, honey, it means that she doesn't have rheumatoid arthritis anymore. No, again, wow! <laughs> so we got this little 12-year-old girl from, 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 you know, just going to be in, in disability. My gosh, that's not life to not having this anymore. Well, I get a call at, after this was, um, I think about, about, about four or five months into care, and the mom calls me up panicked and says, says oh man, she's so sore, her legs are so sore, her, her arms are sore, and, and, I, and I said, well, well, what was she doing? She was running around playing all day. You should have seen it, I've never seen her play that way. Okay, okay, you already know, okay. Yeah, get her some water, get her hot bath. You know, she, she's, you know, she just never played before. Yeah, yeah, I know, so that's kind of cool. So when we look at this, let's look at the grades of arthritis. And this is, this is pretty much how virtually everybody does it. Grade one arthritis means, and this is osteoarthritis, means that it's, it's not in the right position, but there's no destruction of the bone. Grade two means there's beginning destruction of the bone and destruction of the disc. Now what this means is, <clears throat> a disc is supposed to be like this. If that disc gets smaller because it's not moving correctly, the body is going to start to distort the bone to stabilize an unstable segment. So, so see, when, when you're told that it's a degenerative joint disease or degenerative disc disease, no, let's call it protective disc condition. Okay, it's a, it's a totally different way to look at it. Because if this only happens because of abnormal motion and abnormal pressure, then by gosh, restoring the motion or restoring the pressure could reverse it. Now it takes three to five years to see bone changes on an x-ray. So when I see grade two, I can say, yeah, you've had it for three to five years. Oh, how did you know? Well, it takes three to five years to see bone changes and you're seeing it. Now in order, if it's not corrected there, if it progresses to grade three, that takes between eight to 15 years to develop. That means, and you're gonna see more bony distortion because there's less disc height, and that's the body trying to stabilize the joint. Okay, d does that make sense? What's tough is, it's, it goes in the other direction too. Is a disc alive? Yes. yes. Okay, so, so we are in agreement. A disc is living tissue. Yes? yes? Okay, good. Any surgeons in the group? They're gonna say, well, I guess it's alive, but we just don't treat it that way. Okay, when you look at this, since a disc is alive, if you change the pressure on it, you change the force loading, you generate new tissue. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good, there's also a law on bones. Bone is laid down where it's needed, resorb where it's not. It's called Wolf's Law. Okay, that's, and that's true 100 times out of 100. If you put my two arms, one of them in a cast, leave them there for six weeks, this one's going to be less dense because I don't use it. Bone is resorbed where it's not needed, laid down where it's needed. So this right here, this degeneration, this osteophyte, this bone spur is actually there to protect the body, to protect an unstable segment. So if you change the shape of that, you change the force loading on it, you can actually reverse disease and regrow the disc, just like that patient I just showed you. Does, it, does, does that make sense? Okay, and this is only 100 times out of 100. Now, now there is a thing called grade four. Grade four means it's totally fused. We don't get a lot of grade fours in here because by that time, they're, you know, the nervous system is so compromised, they don't live. Now, this is who I'm gonna look like when I'm 75. This is the person you work with. You've seen her in the mall. Now, why does that body posture happen in our society? 
No. 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 It's not slouching. It's not lack of exercise. It's not even degeneration. You got to figure in Aboriginal cultures, you can see 80, 90 year old people, they look like that. They're not hunched over. Okay, in our culture, they do. Remember, toxic blood gives toxic joints. Do we have a healthy, dynamic, mobile environment? No, this is a, the sickest disease society the world's ever seen. So now what she's doing, since all the nerves come out of the back of the spine there, if those discs don't have healthy nutrition, if they don't have healthy, healthy blood supply, if they don't have healthy movement, what's going to happen to the discs of the spine? Are they going to be big or small? Small. They're going to come down on top of that other one. They're going to pinch the nerves and the body adapting and all of these nerves, the nerves to the heart are up here, the nerves to the stomach are down here, the end of the spinal cord's here, that controls virtually everything. So the body's going to do, it's going to start to round over in this posture. By rounding over, you're opening up the back part of the vertebrae. So this hunched over posture is comfortable. It's adapting to toxic environment a hundred times out of a hundred. So you could look at her and say, wow, she's had a really poor nutrition, poor diet, poor movement. There's something going on with her. She's in that position to open up the nerve supply so her body can stay healthy. Does, does that make sense? Because we're never going to have that body posture and that body posture is reversible. Now this is worse. This is, you, you ever see the movie Dumb and Dumber? Okay, let's get it even dumber. Round your shoulders over, just like that, just for a second, okay? Now, we, when in this posture, take a deep breath. <sighs> okay, now, just reposition the shoulders, take a deep breath. <sighs> okay, now the brain burns 25% of the body's oxygen. Do you think that she, her heart has to work harder to get oxygen in the brain, yes or yes? yes. yes. Yeah, okay, good. So what you going to be diagnosed with in our culture? High blood pressure. Yes, high blood pressure. Good. Okay, now, since she has high blood pressure to keep oxygen to her head, remember, this is dumb and dumber stuff, okay? Should we just give her a drug and treat her like a person with a normal physiologic structure to lower her blood pressure? Would that lower oxygen to her brain or make her live longer? No. It's going to suck the oxygen out of her brain and then if we had a society that did stupid stuff like that, would we have an epidemic of Alzheimer's? Oh my God, we do have an epidemic of Alzheimer's. Oh, well, well, wait a second. By lowering oxygen, does that, does that make her body more acidic? Yes or yes? Yes or yes. Because, <gasps> see that? Carbon dioxide goes out. CO2 is acid. If she can't do an oxygen transfer, that her blood is going to be more acidic. Cancer grows more in acidic. Do you think she's at higher risk of cancers? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So now what, what's, what's really stupid is we lower her blood pressure, Increasing her cancer risk, increase, decreasing oxygen to the brain, and then we call that health care. No, that's foolishness. Now, are her discs alive? Absolutely. What I'm saying is we change the world around. Right now, we're going to respect the body's processes. And, and Voltaire, you couldn't get a smarter guy. Doctors are men who prescribe medicines of which they know little to cure diseases which they know less and human beings which they know nothing. Could this be said on the nightly news? Yeah, yeah I mean, just for, just for fun, if you want to go on, type in Fosamax or Boniva, the, the bone drugs that they give for osteoporosis, look at the lawsuits. It's just a blast. Because if you take this drug this, that they give to people with thin bones, it increases the fracture rate. That means it has the opposite effect okay, on human beings. It's sold to strengthen your bones, but it actually weakens the bones. Doctors are meant, okay, yeah. So when we look at this, pain, infections, high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, these are not diseases. They're the body adapting to a toxic environment. To treat it like a disease is foolishness. And, that, and that's what we're ending up with. And so now, we've got two choices here, okay? Now these aren't photoshopped, okay? She's 91, she's a yoga instructor, okay? I know what you're thinking. I want her pharmacist. <laughs> oh wait, you're probably right. You're probably right. Okay, since all medications slow metabolic processes, it's, she probably isn't taking drugs. She's probably moving and eating correctly. This gal here has been teaching yoga on TV forever. I mean, and that's this is a standard, standard 85, 90, 95 year old people. The, the reality is this: I'm getting people in their 50s, 60s, and 70s wheelchairs, walkers. And that's 
that's, that's never been in society before. Why? Because of the care they're getting. They're actually thinking that packaged things can help healthy food and medications are appropriate. And that's not true. But also, when you look at this, incorrect movement causes incorrect brain function. Incorrect brain function, this is Alzheimer's, dementia, everything else. Okay, get, get, so, so we got to change this. Healthcare versus medical care. They're two totally different. If you go to somebody and they say, look, your body has high blood pressure because your discs are getting compressed, your rib cage is getting compressed, and you have high blood pressure because your blood is toxic because you're eating an inconsistent diet with health, okay, we're going to change your diet, we're going to increase your exercise, we're going to send you to the chiropractor to regrow the discs, and then your blood pressure will adapt to that. That's health. Medical care is, by gosh, every symptom you got, we got a drug. Okay, and that's, that's not consistent. That's not consistent with how human beings work. I'm going to show you a case study. Okay, I'm going to turn you all into chiropractors that don't adjust. Here's Dave. Now, this is a typical guy. This is not unusual. For those of you that don't take drugs, I'm telling you right now, 10 medications, which is what he was on, is standard. This is actually low. Okay, now, now when someone's coming in with multiple medications, I always give them advice my mom would give, you know, which is common sense. Don't take two drugs together, separate them by at least an hour, okay, and drink a full glass of water in between. Makes sense, right? You're going to limit the toxic effects of them, okay, and you'll still comply with the white jacket of guy that prescribed the poisons. So now the tough part is, if you, if I get patients that say, Doc, there's not enough hours in the day. <laughs> See, he came in with with Tylenol for joint pain, steroids for asthma, Prevacid for indigestion, metformin for high blood sugar, Lipitor for high cholesterol, Soma for neck, neck spasms, Ambien for sleep problems, Viagra for sexual dysfunction, Prozac for depression, de depression and aspirin to thin the blood. Out of all of those drugs, I, I'm, I'm telling you, this is not abnormal. His main concern was blood pressure because once he started on the blood pressure, things weren't working right. You reduce blood pressure in a guy, it's not good. Okay, and he's only 56. God, I'm 52. Well, in a couple of months. And I will notify everybody when my birthday is. <laughs> okay, so you know, you're supposed to be healthy. So let's just take this apart a little bit at a time and see what science is and what stupid is. Now, obviously, his vertebrae are, are pinched. His, his spine is not functioning correctly. His body is off. So, so let's, let's look at this just, just to see what's scientific. I'm suggesting there's a true health paradigm. That's my ex-governator. Yeah. <laughs> The new health paradigm is making sure the nervous system is working. What's the human potential? What is your potential? If your potential is 120 years, by God, it's got to be 120 healthy years. Not the last 20, 30 years inside of a, a nursing home in a wheelchair. <sighs> Tylenol and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories decrease cartilage production. I'm sorry, remember the joints? Okay, and this is out of the American Journal of Medicine. Two bones coming together, surrounded by a joint capsule covered in cartilage, and those, that cartilage is always regrowing and always, always rebuilding. Tylenol and non steroidal anti-inflammatories destroy the cartilage. Mm. That causes the bone. Wow. Mm. Hi, I know you have joint pain. I'm going to give you something that's going to make you destroy your cartilage. Mm. Temporary relief, though. For peak performance, take Advil. Your cartilage will be destroyed, and you'll be in a wheelchair soon, but by gosh, you'll probably finish the day pain-free. <laughs> okay, now does that sound stupid to anybody but me? Okay, any doctor that's passing this stuff out for joint pain, um, you need to fire them. They're obviously not up on the research, and plus what's, what's mo most frustrating is the joint is giving you symptoms for a reason. Now, you can take fish oils, omega-3s, which has been shown to be better pain relief. You can apply heat, which will rush, rush blood to the area. Or you can find out why the joint deteriorated in the first place. Maybe it's out of alignment. Maybe it has decreased nerve supply. Maybe there's a muscle imbalance. Okay, find out why and then restore the joint. Because can joints be regrown? Yes. Absolutely. Then when you see this body posture, you can see that her spine is opening up to free up those nerves on the back. Why does that posture happen? only because of toxic lifestyles, because those discs aren't getting the nutrients. The body's adapting. Does, it, does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so it, when, when somebody comes in and they say, wow, I only took a Tylenol, 
and I flip out. Can you see that? Can you see why I would? Okay, now, now this is out of Kirkcaldy and Willis. Now, now this, this is a perfect neck, absolutely no arthritis C75. This is normal. This is normal in my world. Normal in my world is no arthritis, okay? And if you do have arthritis, you can reverse it. Okay, that's, that's in my world, it's normal. This is the biomechanic Bible. Now, biomechanics is one of the classes I taught. This is Kirkcaldy and Willis. They say many elderly joints appear, prove to be just as strong in torsion and compression as younger ones. Now, what they're doing is they're taking joints out of cadavers, out of teenage cadavers, out of middle-aged cadavers, out of senior cadavers, and they're putting these joints in huge machines to measure the force loading. It turns out that as you age, your joints still remain strong and flexible. There's no difference. No, go and say it. I didn't know that because why? A disc is alive. It's living tissue. This guy may have 75-year-old memories. His birth certificate may say 75. My gosh, his joints are only about a year old, just like mine. And if they get the appropriate nutrients, it works. Now, inflammation. All these joints are, are you know, they're saying inflammation's bad, inflammation's bad. No, acute inflammation is fantastic. If you can cause inflammation of the joint, that works, that rebuilds the tissue. If I scratch myself, what color is my, it's gonna be? Red. Red. Yeah, because I'm inflaming the tissue, I'm breaking the cells, new cells are gonna be laid down. Within just a matter of days, I'm gonna have brand new skin there. I mean, it, you, you have the same human being design, it's brilliant. So now to treat this, to treat inflammation as a problem, is inconsistent with health. <clears throat> aspirin and Tylenol weaken the body's ability to produce antibodies. So the aspirin a day, does that make your immune system weaker? Yes or yes? Yes. I got, just, just for the heck of it, let's put Tylenol or acetaminophen in NyQuil or DayQuil. <laughs> just do an experiment, see what it does to the population. Yeah. Oh, never mind. They did that. <laughs> So they actually put something in a cold medicine to weaken your immune system, and they call it good for you. Okay, I'm sorry, what does Tylenol do to joint pain? Or to, to joint cartilage? It destroys it. So does that mean that NyQuil, DayQuil cause early cartilage degeneration or damage? See, your bodies aren't supposed to age as quickly as they are. Now we're talking about Dave here, remember, he had joint pain, and joint pain, then he started to develop asthma. Now the joint pain, this is interesting, acetaminophen linked to chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It's increasing the rate of asthma. So if you have joint pain and you're taking a non anti-inflammatory or you're taking Tylenol and you develop a breathing problem, is that a problem with the drug or a problem with the lungs? The it's the drugs, it's just foolishness. Okay, and this is out of the American Journal of Respiratory Care. I mean, all, all of this stuff, people passing this stuff out are not doctors. I have no respect for someone that's drugging something. But, but now, now let's look at this. You can say, well, drugs help and, and diseases are dangerous. You're right, 5,000 people a year die from asthma. That's big. And this is out of the Annals of Internal Medicine. 5,000 people a year die from asthma, and this guy developed asthma possibly, possibly from taking the drugs. So they put him on some steroids. Here's the problem. 4,000 of those 5,000 people die from the drugs used to treat asthma. Okay, if this upsets anyone other than me, Okay, see, I'm talking about arthritis reversal. In order to re reverse arthritis, you have to understand you're in a medical system that's destroying your joints. Okay, so we, we can't do that. We're, we're, we're going to stop this. This one's brilliant. Why do people age? If the 75-year-old guy's joints are just as young as mine, why do some joints break down? i got to tell you why. Okay, when, when you take in... Um, spinach, okay, like I just had like about 60 ounces of juice, okay, that's why I'm juiced up, uh -huh. okay, <laughs> spinach has got tw more protein in it than, than beef, okay, carrots have beta carotene in it, which converts to vitamin A so my lungs can get cleaned, the apples, okay, actually have malic acid in it to clean my arteries, so, but, but all of this has protein, fats, and carbohydrates in it, now that hits my stomach. My stomach has to produce acid in order to break the proteins to amino acids, the fats to fatty acids, the, you know, the carbohydrates and the usable sugars. It has to do that. And the older I get, okay, because I'm over 40 now, my stomach doesn't produce the same acid. 
So this means I can't produce the same proteins. I can't produce the same fatty acids. So unless I pre-digest the food by juicing it or by changing my, my diet or by supplementing, I'm not going to get the same nutrition. Does, does that make sense? Okay. Now here's something dumb and dumber. Let's say you can't process food correctly. You have a problem with digestion. Let's say you take something that reduces the acid. Okay, the little purple pill for 24 hours relief. Now, instead of looking at actually what caused the indigestion, we're just going to give you a drug for it. Now, decreasing the acid means you're not going to get the proteins, you're not going to get the carbohydrates. So what are you going to get? Muscle spasms, irregular heartbeat, convulsions, cognitive decline. Okay, and there's already a ton of, a ton of research on this. And yep, Dave was taking that. So this explains this most complicated handout I gave you. This right here is the key to reversing arthritis. Anything, you're going to see at both ends, optimum health has no symptoms, death has no symptoms. Okay? Okay. Okay, we're kind of in the middle. But anything you do to build your body up, get you closer to health, anything you do to break your body down, get you closer to death. Okay? Diet Coke, which way do you think it goes? <laughs> Death, yeah, because it has uh, uh, wood alcohol in it and formaldehyde, okay, only if your body temperature is over 86. It's going to destroy your joints and acidify your body. Okay, regular Coke, it's got phosphoric acid, it'll destroy bones. Um, vegetable juice is great for you, that'll help you. V8 juice has a neurotoxin. So anything that you do to build up your body will make you healthier. Anything that you do to tear down your body will make it sick. Here's the tough part. Every medication on the planet slows or stops a metabolic process. Every medication. Does this mean every medication? I mean every medication slows or stops a metabolic process. Now if we had no ethics or morals and ran one of the uh, senior homes or the assisted living centers, we could give these people tons of drugs to make their body survive multiple years so we could build the insurance. This is why when you go into those rest homes, they have no energy, nothing. They park them in wheelchairs at, you know, outside. It's disgusting. That's not the way humans should be. And, and I don't think drugs are appropriate in seniors like this. This is not how we're going to spend the last 10 years of our life. Teaching yoga, stretching out, okay, waiting for the bus stop. Heck, she could probably race the bus. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Um, what you need, okay, this guy here, again, I'm, I'm showing you pictures of normal people. These are not exceptional. They're exceptional only because of the, the, the programming that we have, that we're supposed to age as we get older. And that's not true. We get older, our bodies are supposed to be just as healthy. Um, yeah, we've transferred our faith from God to the medical profession. You need healthy blood, healthy movement, healthy nerve supply. Don't poison yourself. Anything you put in your body is going to be reproduced. Okay, does, does, it, does that make more sense? Mm -hmm. So then we go back to Dave. Now, yeah, within two weeks, his blood pressure normalized. That's, that's 100% of the time. 100 times out of 100, if you're taking high blood pressure pills, within two weeks, we give you a blood pressure checker and it starts to normalize. Um, joint pain, okay, went away. Asthma went away. But the tough part is, this is Dave afterwards. Within 90 days, he's totally drug free. What we did is we restored his nervous system. Since the body's self-healing and self-regulating, what we did is we took pressure off the nervous system, got him off the poisons, or, I'm sorry, the medications, and there's a big difference there? Okay, got him off the medications, okay, and his body healed itself. It, does that make more sense? Yeah. It does to me. I know, it, 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 makes, it makes a lot of sense to me. So when we look at this, blood is vitally important to joints. If you have sick blood, you're not going to have healthy joints. Okay, does that make sense? Blood carries oxygen to tissue. It removes waste products. It carries, um, uh, it, I mean, it, it does everything. It balances pH. It carries the immune system to you. I, it, any one of those functions, how would you be healthier? See, when you're taking a blood pressure medication because, you know, there, there's, you know, the body's adapting, the, the something, whatever reason that the blood pressure medications are given to you, does it add to the length or quality of life or does it just change the reading on the machine? Okay, we got to ask the right questions in order to live healthy. It only changes the machine. 
um, arteries and veins have to be cleaned. This is a healthy blood supply. This is a clump blood supply. So grains, breads, pastas, cereals, um, all clump blood vessels together. Okay, most medications clump blood vessels together. Guess what pain relievers do? Clump blood vessels together by inhibiting prostaglandins. So now this, if you have artery damage, those arteries are clogged and you get this clumping going through, you're decreasing blood supply to those joints. That increases pain. Okay, and then, you know, in, in dumb world, we would take more pain relievers and that would cause more damage. In the real world, what we do is we clean our blood by cleaning the arteries. This is where soluble fibers come in. This is why anybody who has got joint pain, we recommend 30 to 60 ounces of vegetable juice a day. Does that make sense? So when somebody comes to me and they say, Doc, my joints hurt, I took a Tylenol, is my frustration shared now? Thank goodness, good. Because I, I don't want to seem like a fanatic, but gosh, I know the science. When you know the science and, and the history of this, you can't do it. Inflammation of the arteries is bad. This means long-term toxic exposure. It doesn't mean that arteries are clogged. This is why there's never been a study that shows that stents or bypasses add to the length or quality of life. They don't. They don't. Particularly when you look at some of the videos around here, eating is one of the best ones. This one. It shows actual medical doctor with a 90% clogged artery and virtually 100% clogged artery. He had a heart attack. He cleaned his arteries perfectly within 90 days. That, that doesn't mean stents or anything. He actually took soluble fibers and cleaned his arteries. And if you clean your arteries, you're going to get it. Now, how old is this pool? Brand new, or is it 100 years old? I've been, I've been to Hearst Castle, and they got pools up there that are 100 years old. They look just like this. So what you're telling me is to take care of this pool, we're not going to wait for it to crack. We're going to check the pH of the water. We're going to keep that coping nice. If a crack develops, we're going to, does that make sense? It could be healthy for 100 years. The problem is we're, we're, we're doing it differently. The healthcare is not healthcare. It's your blood test is fine. We don't need to do anything for you. Oh, the blood test is bad. We need to give you this chemical to change the blood test. When real health care is, you fight cancer every day, you clean your arteries every day, you make your joints healthy every day. D d does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Every day is a, is, a, is a day that you put healthy stuff in your body. If you have pain anywhere that shuts blood supply down to the gut, it means that your nutrition is not is going to be poor. This nervous system is vital to have clear. And since it's, it's encased in bone, if those bones are coming down, you're going to get this distortion of body posture. And that, that's just adapting to deficiency or toxicity. It's the only way to do it. When you look at this, this is a toxic lifestyle. This is normal human. We're in a calorie-rich, nutrition-poor environment calorie-rich, nutrition-poor environment. And that's thickening up the blood. It's making the blood horrible. It's not extra weight that causes joint pain. It's thick, toxic blood. That thick, toxic blood can't get to the joints. It starts to break down. Now, when you look at this, this is actually a fake disc. There's the side view, there's the front view. Why do 85% of surgeries have to be repeated? Do you want me to tell you why? It doesn't fix the problem. Yeah, they're working in the wrong place. See, see, what they're doing is most MRIs are done laying down. They're, they need to be done weight bearing. Okay, so laying down, it gets a totally different perspective. But can you see that this spine here is not straight? A disc is so tough, and I know I've described this before, 80 interconnecting rings of ligaments. You can't break it. It's tough. In order for it to break down, there has to be a biomechanic problem somewhere on the body. So to look at just one disc as the problem is foolish. How foolish? 85% of the time foolish. Okay, and I, I, I think like 3 or 4% die during surgery, so we could, you know, say it's like 87% of the time. But anyway, so when we look at this, if that disc is compressed, it means there's altered mechanics up there. This gal went through surgery, still had the pain. Then came in there, the leg pain went away because we fixed actually the fixed the problem. Now, this right here is a reverse curve in the neck. When I hear that joints are deteriorating because you're old, have you heard that? Yep. Okay, good. Go into the doctor and say, yes, doc, I can see that these two joints here are deteriorated. But I can also see that these three joints up above it are not deteriorated. How does that work, doc? How much older are these joints than these? 
I know. Isn't that good? That's like, bam. Oh, man, that's a need of the. Okay, yeah, yeah. You can't do martial arts to doctors. Okay, they get upset. But, but I mean, it's so foolish when you're lied to again. You're lied to again. Because right here, and, and this is where I made a mistake, I thought that joint was fused. I thought, I thought it was, was unrepairable. And sure enough, you can see over here, maybe, maybe not in the back, but the joint's starting to open up. Um, now, why? Because a joint is alive. You restore motion, it restores nutrition to it, you change the biomechanics, it re regrows. This bone spur is just a protective mechanism. Have you heard this before? Yes, I know, but I can't repeat it enough because if you own this, you own it. There's doctors out there not understanding this. And they're the ones that, that are being paid for health care. How do we change that, John? Now, everybody comes here. <laughs> we film it. We put it out there. We get some caustic chiropractor that reverses arthritis to say, look, if a doctor passes out a pill, fire him. If all of you guys fire your doctors that are giving you a pill, they're going to start to say, wow, I don't have any more patients. Good. All my patients are getting healthy. Then they're going to have to get into health care, like Julian Whitaker, who's got a very successful center, talking about health. I like that. The revolution starts now. This gal here, I mean, when you look at this, four back surgeries, that joint is fused. She comes in, the back pain goes away. She's able to play golf. And you can see it's hard to see here, but the disc is regenerating. I'm showing you, that, and I'm not showing you the easy cases, okay? I mean, th this gal was a nurse. You know, so, I mean, I've got maybe two, three hundred nurses as patients. I have only six medical doctors. I, obviously, nurses are a lot smarter. <laughs> you know, th this one here, the same thing. <clears throat> Abnormal joint function. I mean, depression, pain. What do you do for the pain? They're going to take a drug that thickens up the blood. You thicken up the blood, you're not going to have healthy gut. Now, serotonin is the drug produced by the gut and it's called a feel-good hormone. So does this mean 100% of the people with depression need to have healthy gut function? Yeah. yeah. Is that ever discussed? No. It all reverts back to the nervous system not, not functioning correctly, the joints not functioning correctly, and again, 90 days, drug-free, normal spine. I mean, it, it's, it's, <clears throat> we could do this all day long. In my office, I have, I have two video cam or two little picture frame things that just flash before and after x-rays all day long, all day long. And I have it going to the public. And it says reversing arthritis, reversing arthritis. It, it's, that's human potential. <clears throat> to live to 100 healthy. You need healthy nerve supply. If you don't have healthy nerve supply to the joint, it, it messes up. You need regular exercise. You need proper nutrition, sufficient rest. That's what we're going to talk about next week. And prayer and meditation. I'm going to do something amazing. I'm going to hydrate the cartilage in my knees right now. Now, I've had four knee operations, okay? I've fractured my right knee twice, my left one once. I was once run over by a car, and they said I'd never walk without a limp, but I'm gonna hydrate the cartilage. Wait, did I do that too fast? <laughs> I know you saw it. Okay, I gotta do it again. No, do you know what I just did? I took a step. Okay, this is the regular exercise, a step. What a step does is the leg swings in the air, then that creates a negative pressure on the joint, <laughs> sucking fluid into the joint. So as long as my blood's healthy, I'm gonna get synovial fluid production every time I swing and open that joint. Then I stand on it and I get compression. So you get decompression, compression, decompression, compression, and that makes the cartilage healthy. So that regrows the cartilage. So the surgeons that said, well, you know, you'll be in line for a knee replacement and all this other stuff, you know, we'll give you some drugs to be healthy. In their world, that's true. In my world, the body's, the power that makes the body heals the body. No, say it with me. Wow! That's what I said. It makes so much sense. It really does. Okay, now, now this. Obviously, you want to get checked. Okay? And every January, and, and this I've been doing this since I opened practice. Guess what it was last year? If it's $12 this January, guess what it was last year? $11. $11. I know, I know. And we do this because we get patients from everywhere. I mean, literally, we've got a guy from Dubai coming out pretty soon. He's going to come out next month. But we, we got to do, 
a posture analysis to make sure that you're, you don't have that. And if you do have it, let's correct it. Then we do a consultation, a drug search, because then I show you each medication, what it was prescribed for, what it's depleting your body. Hey, some, I mean, if you've had organ transplants, you may need some medications, okay, to stop that immune system response. We do an exam. If I feel you need x-rays, you're going to get digital x-rays that you keep a copy of that we can identify if those joints aren't moving correctly. You get a report, so I show you what the x-rays are. And if I see a subluxation patterns on there, you get an adjustment. And that's, normally it's like almost 300 bucks. It's $12, okay, does that make sense? Okay, good, because we're all part of the same family, okay? Thank you so much for making it here tonight. I really, really appreciate it.